Maybe I should unmute to, to tell you that. That is. Now really... we hear you. <laughs> All right, so I think, oh. Hank, you're the one who asked for this particular meeting, and Michael's not going to be here. So uh, uh, do you want to lead the discussion today? Yeah, sure. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not capable of screen shares, but I, um, I will be able to lead the discussion. So it, it, it is an uh, extraordinary meeting because of the, uh, uh, I think, uh, a small issue that is um, presented by, um, this was issued, filed by, by Thomas on the um, GitHub um, repository. Uh, Thomas, could you remind me again of the uh, issue, or could you share maybe even the, um, the GitHub um, issue checker, the corresponding one, or, or, or can you even hear me? I can hear you. I'm okay. trying to uh, enable sh screen sharing on my laptop, which uh, is new, and therefore... Ah, okay, I see. Macintosh, I see. Yeah. Yeah, always uh, providing new attack vectors yeah. for the others. Ah, uh, quit and reopen, <laughs> bloody hell. Uh, I, uh, I don't know. Uh, okay, I will rejoin. Okay. Okay. Well, my WebEx also has a ton of new features. So there is as this, um, I, will, I will look into the issue. There are not a lot of open issues, so. Um, so trust anchor definition is, I think, the issue. It's uh, number three nine two. And uh, mistakenly, uh, because I was taking this from uh, top of my head, I and this is a little bit embarrassing. Uh, I was thinking about the trust anchor. Uh, sorry, about the root of trusts. But uh, what I actually meant was uh, this issue, which is about trust anchor definitions, and it's about uh, yeah, well. Uh, that coming from me is a little bit ironic. Um, so, uh, <laughs> Thomas, could you? Uh, oh, we got so many you, people that showed up here. Probably just to discuss through the trust thread that's going on. So, which yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, that is a good thing because I, I have not fun. read all of because I'm on vacation, so I'm not up to speed on the whole thread. So if we get to that, then we'll see how that goes. Yeah. So, so the trust thing is on the threads are basically roots of trust. Uh, the thing in the device. <laughs> Uh, this year is about terminology about yeah. the authority uh, endorsing from the outside of the device. So, Thomas, could you just quickly walk us through this issue? And it's basically written up in two sentences. Thomas, you're muted. And I don't know if you're screen sharing. Uh, who's screen sharing? Thomas, that's right? Yeah. Okay, so Thomas, you're working, but still are muted. And now you're unmuted and stop screen sharing. <laughs> okay, this works great. <laughs> yeah, without um, without uh, Michael, we all do. And uh, Dave, I feel you. I'm also on vacation, and this is my fourth call today. So, um, I'm, yeah, I, have yeah, to I was this. attempting to get by with zero calls, but this one seemed uh, important. Yeah, it's, Oh yeah, let's hope it's it's worth your time. So Thomas F has rejoined. Hear me now? Yes. Oh gosh, thank you. Um, <laughs> uh, so Christmas is, is in two weeks. Why do you have a new notebook now? It exploded. Oh. My old Intel thing is gone. So I now have an M1. Share. Can you see anything? Yes. It's a flow chart. No, it's not. Okay. Now, it, yeah, now, now it's a, now it's a, um, a issue. So is it, this is the issue. It's purely editorial, uh, but uh, it seems important to me. Um, and uh, it is because uh, uh, throughout the document, the, the term trust anchor is meant uh, as a public key. Um, and associated metadata, <clears throat> and uh, and this is true for you know some of the neat cases, but it's not true for the uh, attestation schemes that are based on symmetric crypto, like uh, Mars, like uh, certain modes of dice, certain modes of PSA, and so on. So I think we should be um, you know um, uh, we, we should extend that definition to cover all these cases because these are you know valid architectures. Although one might question 
the sanity of whoever wants to to deploy symmetric keys in a, in in a while. But uh, anyway, um, those things exist, and those things need to be uh, covered by by the architecture. I think so. There's some editorial work to do uh, because this thing trickles through a, a few sections of the document, and uh, yeah. That, that. Actually, the, the, the use of trust anchor is very scoped uh, in the document. It is in the trust model, basically, uh, with the relying party, and then it's complement uh, the verifier here, and then it is uh, tied together in how to protect the trust anchor. So, there are actually only three subsections uh, really involved in all yeah. of the terminology issue. I think so, editorial-wise, we are in a good space. Uh, it could be worse, way worse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's, it's section seven and section twelve. In fact, uh, mm -hmm. twelve uh, blah blah blah. What is that? Twelve four, effectively. So yeah, twelve four is the binding again, and this is maybe something interesting because we were also talking about protecting uh, uh, keys so, uh, on the roots of trust side. Uh, but I, yeah. I was so, just getting through those, Thomas, and uh, although I think. Uh, if I understand your proposal, I agree with it, which is to take the term trust anchor and make the term trust anchor also uh, encompass with the cases where your trust anchor is a symmetric key. Mm -hmm. As I'm scanning through these other sections, I only see one section that would require any changes to do that, which is the section of the definition of those two paragraphs. Um, I think the other ones like 12.4, I don't see any changes necessary there. I think the, yeah, there are two places in which six. T twenty four is 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 cited, and these are the two places where you know the narrowing of the definition needs to be right. uh, treated. Uh, so we just need to to scan for, for the instances of RFC sixty twenty four and and so just twelve point four. Can you go to twelve point four for a second? Sure. It's, that one cites it, but it's just as more discussion of trust anchor store requirements. I don't think that one need that. I don't think that one is narrow. That one I think is perfectly fine. I don't think this one requires any changes. Meaning this statement would still be true for symmetric keys. Mm, no, because the this is no, about the trust anchor store requirements, not about the trust about, anchor. The discussion about the protection uh, that happens in sixty twenty four is, you know, just scope to the public keys. So if we want to, you know, extend the discussion of trust anchor protection to symmetric keys as well, so this is not enough, right? So I would suggest we 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 cite uh, uh, we cite NIST eight hundred fifty six or fifty seven. I don't remember. Uh, but there's a okay. general so you have of... additional things you'd like to cite. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. It's fine with me. Yeah, that, that, that'd be fine. Yeah, 57 is the one you want. Okay. Okay. So, um, yeah. So if I can we, be very simple, we but, recently uh, had a, uh, a pull request, I think it's been merged now, uh, that talked about the confidentiality requirements in many cases around the Trust Anchor store. And certainly, if it's a symmetric key, the confidential requirements around the trust anchor store are uh, mandatory. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. I mean, it, you may not care about, you may or may not care about confidentiality of a public key, right? But you certainly care about confidentiality of a symmetric key. Of course, yeah. So, and that's why I think, you know, citing uh, the NIST document is 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 the best sure. thing we can do here. Yeah. Because it it treats just the, the you know the, the key store, which is what yeah. we want. It just you know it's not just the trust anchor, so it's the key it generics the key store that we need to cover. Maybe the correlation between uh, the key stores and why they can be trust anchor stores is a uh, addition to twelve, four. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if if everybody is fine with that, Thomas, we would mm -hmm. be super happy with the proposal. Okay. Then, yeah. Go ahead and generate. Uh, sure. Maybe. No problem. Thomas, when you get a second, if you can go back to 7.1. Yeah. So yeah. this is the main Relying section, I think, that you're, that you're um, uh, the last sentence of that one. So as defined in, I think that one is fine, but where it says in the last sentence of that, the trust anchor may be a certificate or it may be a raw public key. Uh, I think that sentence would, you'd want to um, augment that one. The trust anchor could also be a Symmetric key, you could do that in another sentence, for example, or by modifying that one. Um, right. But then the next sentence after that, meaning the first one in the next paragraph, where it talks about I have in the relying party store the verifier's public key or certificate. Um, I think you could just drop the word public there, for example, mm -hmm. or you could add public key or symmetric key or certificate. But I think just dropping the word public there would be sufficient for that for that paragraph, in my opinion. Okay. 
it's like if the sentence right before, you know, the previous paragraph already said public key or symmetric key, then you have to yeah, repeat. Yeah, the context that. is established. Yeah, you're right. Key or certificate, yeah. Correct. So I don't think it's that difficult here. I think you're right. It's just editorial. It's just getting the right text added because I think the it's fine for the paragraph to begin with as defined in 6024, right? Um, mm -hmm. And then augment that to say, um, in addition to the coverage in 6024, uh, in various cases today right the trust anchor could also be a symmetric key something like that so yeah 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 okay okay so, uh, are you okay if we assign the issue to you now that go ahead yeah yeah, yeah that is um your originator of the issue and and what about the verifier side yeah it was so just that check. Is, yeah. uh, that, that's good this is good because yeah, I didn't see any issues there. I was just looking at it while we were waiting for Thomas to check it to, to fix his audio. I was scanning through it and it looked okay to me. Yeah, because that that literally always talks about the store basically, and, mm, and right, so right. so the implications are inherited. And key material still applies. Key material is very generic. So and then someplace else uses the word credentials when talking about what the verifier checks. I thought that was also fine. One okay. of these sections that has trust anchor uses the term credentials. Which is actually preferable to saying key material. It's a good deal more to the point. Are you, you, um, your preference, key material well, or credentials? I would prefer credentials throughout and minimizing the use of key, except where you mean the key that is used to encrypt or to sign a specific thing. Key material is a is that a key and its metadata? What does it mean? That's why credentials is a better term. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, I'm not entirely sure. So if Hannes would be yeah. here, he would probably is in strong favor of key material because in the IoT realm, people uh, think credentials is like equivalent to the, the uh, PKIX and, and they just want to do symmetric crypto and that's why they so prefer sometimes the key material term. I do not have a strong opinion, uh, but uh, I guess my only opinion is that for the per request for this issue, that you don't change this term because if there is an issue, it's uh, separate from the other one. Uh, yeah, probably. Other words, Agreed. I think it would be very easy to get um, uh, a per request uh, for the symmetric key merged um, because it sounds like there's not really any debate where this one people that might have strong opinions are not here and this one might be hard yeah. so it's say keep it separate if if somebody's going to propose a change do it in a separate issue or thing which may or may not be accepted at this point so i don't know agreed dave yeah and we can we can look out for the credential key material thingy um uh, later this week Ira. it's my preference right now would be uh if it's uh, if people can grumble, 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 live with it, then it's probably not worth changes. <laughs> but uh, like Thomas's point was, there's something that just doesn't work for some cases, right? Including, you know, I think PSA you mentioned, right? So I, I get why the other one isn't is necessary. So okay, thank you very much. Yeah, so uh, um, you can move on with this. Uh, uh, proposals will be um, reviewed you by other editors and uh, volunteers, of course, and. Um, Thank you already for that beforehand. Um, <laughs> and so you, you can assign me as a review. I will look at it. So, so I, I promise because I'm on vacation. I just have kids to care of, um, okay. which is a delight. <laughs> God, that's the last of the year. Um, so uh, having addressed the trust anchor issue, the, the, the actual um, literal. I see a now, question from Thomas Harjono. Is there a trust anchor ah. definition in the trust anchor management protocol RFC? Yes, that is the 6024 that we're, refer that we're referencing right now. Exactly. That's what we're talking about. So. Trust anchor is also defined in 4949. So I know that was 10 minutes ago, Thomas H, um, but just want to make sure you already got that answer. So I don't have a chat indicator. Why is there no red thingy? Sorry, Thomas. I have, yeah, there's no indication here. And thank you, Dave, for, for seeing that. And Thomas, I you can just now thought, or I would have answered it 10 minutes ago. So. <laughs> uh, okay. 
We are that, that's all right. Yeah. I, I just I just volunteered. I'm outside. That's why I'm on mute. With ah, okay. Around me. Sorry, that's why. Yeah. But no, thanks, David. Thanks, uh, Hank. Sure. And um, where was I? Oh, yeah, okay. So now uh, Dave indicated early on in the discussion, as uh, the, the meeting started, that there is a another trust um, discussion on the list at the moment that we can uh, also pick up on today, although the actual uh, reason to meet was the uh, anchor one. So the roots of trust something came up again and raised his it's ugly head again. And um, I'm, I'm so mo most of the time, my, my, my current strategy is, is to say, this is a carefully orchestrated consensus. We aren't going to touch this anymore. And, and if Michael would be here, he might echo that. I don't know. Uh uh, but I'll also, like I like I think the, the only messages in the entire thread that I have read were uh, Hank's last two responses, and maybe at one earlier uh, when it started or something, but the Hank's uh, last geez. two responses, which I agree with, uh, that is the general rule. And uh, I guess uh, I am slightly biased by the discussion in suit since I'm one of the chairs of that one, where in the suit architecture document, unlike the rats architecture document, the suit working group explicitly chose to never use the term root of trust. It only uses the term trust anchor and is always very specific. And maybe uh, Thomas F's issue on trust anchor might appear might uh, apply to that one too. If anybody uses symmetric keys with uh, software updates, but um, uh, I, I was convinced by the suit argument that root of trust means lots of things to different people, and it's not an IETF term per se. It comes from various other places, and so suit chose to just not use the term at all. And so that's my bias. And so that's why I agree with Hank's, Hank's uh, summary there. So now, root of trust we do use in the rats architecture document <laughs> as a carefully crafted um, consensus. My own preference would be to remove all uses of the term root of trust, uh, but uh, I know that's not the consensus. So yeah, and that's where we are at the moment. That is the problem. So so Michael also has some strong feelings about putting some words in here, and I've I've, I've read on the list. Um, like 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 a middle layer of of root of trust definition. I think the term was root of trust for attestation, and then of course net sprang uh, the typical trap that is. Uh, of course, there are a lot of uh, subclasses of these roots in in uh, for remote attestation naturally. Okay. And so uh, so there was one there was one. Sorry, uh, let me just quickly finish that. Uh, there was one proposal that I think came relatively close to something. I would be okay with, but that was would unsettle or unrest the uh, the the piece that is the current uh, agreement. We just use the term, but not define it. But there was someone correcting me and saying, "Yeah, but it's not the intended one." And there was a counter proposal. I think it was from Lawrence or from Jeremy. I actually don't know anymore. And so, so that one was close. I was not okay with the second sentence. I think it was Jeremy. Um, it was Jeremy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So Jeremy, I think, got it quite well in the first paragraph, but then the second paragraph went expositional again. I was like, okay, this is not a definition anymore. Um, but uh, but the question is, do we really want to touch this yet now in this time where no. we almost have? Yeah. <laughs> okay. And more than that, I would strongly urge that you completely excise the word root word root of trust and in particular do not create attestation root of trust which is a bastard uh bastardization of yes. root of trust for reporting and conflicts with half a dozen other standards bodies definitions yeah. of an rtr so Aaron, did i hear so, you right that you would also be in favor of removing the term from the architecture document i would remove it completely because otherwise you will be forced to a definition by the ad's if no one else <laughs> and you will spend months arguing about a definition and still 80 percent of the people will be unhappy okay, okay. this is basically uh, reflecting the uh, tcg internal experience <laughs> which is yeah, an um, awful experience yes but that, i have to that was my opinion but i but I, I i am happy to hear that there's somebody else in the working group that has yeah. the, the same recommendation so thank you <laughs> I, 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 effectively i would agree with you with the one exception that we will then have to explain what a testing environment does without 
spelling yeah. out the word root of trust. It's a dance. We're dancing but, around this I for ages fine. now. But I, mean, I think that I, that's fine. You have yeah. a verifier environment. You have a reliant party environment, I hope. And so we have to say that there is a uh, there's a uh, thing that uh, and I'll find, I'll find a synonym for root because I would say rooting um, that that is the basis for uh, trust assumption trust relationships that is implemented in a device and at that point people would like ask me you are talking about a root of trust right and and um, yeah I, I am but I'm not using the word and this is the problem I, we, we were exercising for so long. Okay, so since I've been encouraged by Ira, then I will state my opinion here, which I was okay. previously Good. not going to because I thought that we were already settled that I was in the rough. Okay, mm -hmm. um, that uh, uh, I believe that it is possible to do that without using the term root of trust. And I think that the suit architecture document is an example uh, that shows that it is possible to do that because that one has already gone through IESG and everything without using the term root of trust. Um, and it has to had to define different things, like had to cover, you know, the secure boot scenario and so on without ever using the term root of trust, which it did. Okay, so I think the fact oh. that it did means that uh, that I I believe that it is possible to do. Okay. Um, secondly, um, I think the root of trust itself is confusing in the sense the, that that um, Ira uh, mentioned. Um, so, for example, once you have endorsements, then the trust anchor in your trust anchor store. Is not anything that is device specific, right? Your trust anchor in the trust anchor store of the verifier is the endorser's uh, trust anchor, not the devices. And in that sense, there is no root, okay, in the chain sense on the device. The root is all the way it says the as the uh, the the endorser's trust anchor. So that's why to yeah, me, it's not point. really the root; it's the middle of the chain, right? And so the whole trust yes, root it, is actually it, more it, it would meet, helpful in my opinion. So anyway, it, I'll, would, I'll it would meet the now. dice. It would meet the dice architecture better. I, I see that, uh, and it, it would streamline better with with the the coexistence of hardware, TPMs, and and the dice chains. I, I, I absolutely agree with that. And yes, it is. Um, that's why I don't enticing. like the term root because it, it implies that there's no endorser, and often there is, and that's why. And I know, I know no, a root is, cannot but, exist yes, without yes. an endorser. That is a fact. It, uh, well, it, I'm saying that is a terminology problem that people find confusing, right? The fact okay, that the yeah. root is not the root of a chain, the root is the middle of the chain, is what is very confusing. And that yeah, is, but the uh, root has a specific item started. to it, which is the secret. And I think that is Lauren's point yeah. that the root includes. At least one secret that is identifying the subject that is a system that we don't want to call root of trust. Yeah, so I think and, the main points so, are yeah. uh, root of trust is confusing for two reasons, right? One is it always has to be qualified, as Thomas H is pointing out in the chat, right? That would, and I yeah. think that was in one of the me messages you were responding to, Hank, because right. I did see a note about that. And the other one is the fact that root is not really a trust anchor. Uh, or, or may or may not be a trust anchor, and it's confusing. And no, it's never. Well, that's why it's I think never an anchor. Uh, and conflating trust anchor with root of trust is yeah. part it's of a, a major problem happening in many yes. standards bodies. Yeah. Yes. But a trust anchor is just some key material. It's nothing more. Yeah, well, but the problem it's, it's is the one that things have to it's chain it's up to because it's the anchor, right, and not just a, a set of keys. Yes, exactly. no, I know. If so one has a chain, a, a certificate right. chain, or a chain of trust. Bad term for that reason, um, <laughs> but um, nonetheless, it, it it is very different than a root of trust, which. NIST, ETSI, ITU, ISO, many have defined for many years to be a small piece of code that can be trusted partly because it is small and it's extremely carefully vetted and, you know, verified code because other mm -hmm. it has to be trusted because there's yeah. nothing behind it. It's at the bottom of at, the turtles. As it's at said. the bottom of the turtles, exactly. And that is the difference. That is the difference. The bottom, the, 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 when we talk about remote attestation, I think a very essential part, and each I think is, uh, this is showing that, is the evidence created by the system. And the evidence creation, gener sorry, generation of evidence is based on a blind trust. 
and that blind trust is put through the root turtle. No. And well, the, it puts uh, in the anchor. Yes. Right. Right. Which in his case, yeah. putting your blind trust in the endorser's uh, root. Sorry, you know, the, the, the root of his uh, the certificate chain. No, wait, 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 wait. They have no blind trust in, 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 in the root of trust, period, because that's what's in the first. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, exactly. Let, let me finish. So the blindness is, of course, remediated by the endorsement. That's why it's not Absolutely blind. Absolutely correct. It is not that's blind. Much, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, Thomas but, but, but just from said the in point, the chat. Blind yes, trust right. must be coupled with legal trust, and that's contracts. That's what yes. I emphasized in at yes. least one of my notes. That um, is absolutely correct. Trust, period, some level of trust is entirely about out of band contracts and negotiations yes. and federations and has nothing at all to do with the particular. Um, Keychain that's used to sign some endorsement absolutely. or anything else. I'm absolutely with you there. There is uh, there, there's reputations, there's communities, there is government bodies, there's certification. There are many right. non-technical things that are the effective uh, source of trustworthiness here, and and I agree with that wholeheartedly. Uh, and supply chains apparently yeah. book. I mean, my, my but, point is but, that but, 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 the but, but, environment, the finish, my... environment relationship is the same as the endorser to the root of trust relationship. It's exactly the same. It's just one entity signing the signing capabilities of another entity. It's part of the yeah. change. Yeah, but, but the now, now you have you have key material software. You have one private key that lives up in the sky at some CA, and that is your trust anchor. And then you have a your effective one. Right. If that secret is gone, your trust anchor is gone. Right. And then you have one secret key that is the, the other end of this certification path. And that is rooted in the device by a protected capability. And that's your root of trust. So you have two ends here. One of them uh, is signing for the evidence. Wait for it. That is the signing of the evidence. That is at the low level here. Or it's derived in dice cases down to this level. Okay. Um, but uh, the other one is in the, in the sky, the bureaucracy, uh, where you do the CA stuff. So these are the two ends, and and just highlighting one end is just like the other is simply wrong. So so if we are doing the removal of root of trust, we have to somehow explain that the private key of the CA, of course, plays no role in signing evidence on a device, but it plays a very important role entrusting the signature created that is something different but it's fundamentally uh, entangled so and this difference is hard to grasp and that is why there's all this confusion about trust anchors and rules of trust i think right well, uh, i agree with a couple of your points and disagree with a couple of your points okay. Um, okay the fact that there is exactly two ends i disagree with once you have composite devices, the multiple processors and line cards and networks in between them, then your layers can be across multiple chips and multiple, depending but on what you have different device, uh, you know, secrets. Devices, right. And so my but point is the same relationship secrets. that you have between the cloud and a uh, and one processor can be a relationship between one processor and another processor inside the same chassis or even in. Yeah. You know, Separate chassis yeah. that are attached together in some sense. If you turn use correct the term chassis special. Correct. Right. I was breaking it down to the simple yeah. scenario, but you're yeah. correct. Now can so multi multiple ends in the device. Every yeah. use of um, I should say I don't know about every um, many uses at least at the bottom of the chain of of a testing environment to target environment can be cross processor, and so that mm -hmm. means that it, it's not just binary. Is my main point. Okay, so that's one of the points I wanted to make. Um, there was another one too, and I forgot what it was. Oh shoot. I'm sorry. Uh, my point um, is, do you consider every processor in the device as having a root of trust? I mean, it just gets to why the term root of trust is actually something to stay away from as much as possible. Yeah, I, I, I see your point, but also we have to, uh, but, but you, you, you apparently did not disagree that these um, relationships that are certification paths into the composite device, multiple layers, uh, have two ends. It, it, it might well, be a, 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 a the testing environment and target environment has two ends. The testing environment end and the target environment end. Exactly. Three layers that way. 
Okay. Exactly. And, and this. And if you say every testing environment, or at least many of them, are roots of trust, all the ones that have a hardware component, and maybe even some with a software component, you might consider roots of trust, depending on your definition, right? Because it's a fuzzy definition and people debate about it. Um, yeah. And uh, that's why I would so, like to stay away from it because you don't have to get into whether firmware environments can have roots of trust or not and things like that. So I, 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 I'm I convinced by Ira's argument that says you're either going to debate about it endlessly. Um, or you, you, or you uh, ignore it. The most that I think is safe to do, in my opinion, so I, since uh, Ira gave me permission, I'm getting in my soapbox for a second. The most that's safe to do is if you're going to reference a specific document, you can say in a block context, this term is used. Is, is this is the same? What we're talking about here, an example, is is the root of trust for blah in the following scenario, right? Where it's a very narrow statement and not- uh, yeah, and in about okay. I'm, happy, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm yeah. actually happy with that. I'm actually happy with that. So if we could remove root of trust terms from mm -hmm. the document in a way where we just reference, for example, I think that's very important, the generation mm -hmm. of evidence with an example for the root of trust of reporting, mm -hmm. I'm fine with that then the connection to the outside world is yeah. established. People who really obsess on the rule of trust things, and there are a lot of these, sorry, uh, they will find their connection to this document. That's what I think is important for the, mm -hmm. for the strategy value of this document, that people can relate to it and they can understand how this works. And, and, but, but, but we don't have to do it all over the place. We can do it in one specific place with a good reference. And I think, and that was uh, one of the examples Ned raised on the email thread, was the root of trust reporting, I think is the most obvious one because mm -hmm. that is creating the evidence. And so, so going for that one as an example and saying, this is how it works and then stay off that and, and maybe tying that definition to the testing environment definition somewhere, I'm, I'm happy with that, that we can right. remove the other occurrences so, uh, so carefully. I, I'd like a couple comments. I mean, I, yeah. I only proposed sure. root of trust for attestation just because I wanted to distinguish it from general notion of roots of trust. So that was only conditional if uh, mm -hmm. on the idea that we were actually going to use the term uh, root of trust throughout the document. So I, I, and I, and I, and I, I'm, I'm really lined up with Dave and actually uh, Hank's last comment where we uh, don't use the term uh, and, um, you know, but maybe reference it as an example, you know, once or twice. Um, so I, I think I'm basically, you know, agreeing with everything that's being said here. Um, and you can scratch my proposal for root of trust for attestation. Um, the other thing I want to point out is the place where root of trust is used in the document is in the layered attestation. That's that's really where the, the usage is heavy. Um, yes. And uh, I mean, I have I've made a lot of comments about layered attestation and, and all that. And I, I personally would let, like to see root of trust removed from that. But that. Uh, I mean, I've kind of said everything I'm going to say about layered attestation at this point. So, I mean, I, it is what it is. So, thanks, Lawrence. I appreciate that. And that you are also joined. That is not. Yeah, that is here. So, uh, Ned, you um, might have followed some of the discussion. I think enough of it to uh, to comment on it. <clears throat> Sounds like the trend is everybody's in favor of removing the term. Yeah. But, yeah. Okay. Okay. That's an observation. But oh, and, sorry. And the oh, issue oh, was oh, really <laughs> the issue was really on trust anchor, which we realized, and in, in the early part of the conversation, we agreed that um, trust anchor was the topic, not root of trust, notwithstanding the uh, email um, threads, um, and I suggested, and Dave chimed in and said, "Okay, then I'll speak up." <laughs> Um, and others now, I think, have chimed in saying, let's yeah. just remove the use of root of trust completely normatively and have one or two informative out references to an SP 800 document, for instance, um, of a particular root of trust. Or, or, or we can have an example. We can, we can even have an a example. bouquet of a bouquet of references that say, these yeah. basically all agree on how this you can create evidence with. That is very useful, but this is an example. The right. important thing is we have two environments, one is the testing, the other one is the target, yada, yada, yada. So, so I think with that way, we could uh, resolve the, let's call it um, contentious use of the term, but still 
connect to the people that feel it's very important to their work. So, so I think I think there would be a middle ground that I would accept uh, pull requests for. And uh, but now the next question is, um, are we going to do the thing this year? <laughs> I'm not really sure. I don't. If you wanna, <clears throat> yeah. Did we reference the NIST documents that define the roots of trust? Not that. Uh, I think at the moment it is not. Let me check that. But I think. You know, to replay some of the conversation in the past, we had discussion around no. around the separation of uh, of we we had discussion around hey you can't check yourself and so exactly that ended up with the testing environment and the uh, target environment, which is I think that's fine addresses it. And then the, again, the layering and the layering. So, so in some context, every every example of a testing environment, target environment, is a layering example. Um, but you could have, yes, you know, more more layering than that. And the the question then is around how do you establish trust in the testing environment, and if there's more than one, whether then, then that sort of becomes the de facto root of trust. You don't have to use the term, but but the conversation should be around how do you establish trust in the bottom turtle, essentially. Yeah, and and that's where the endorsement and and so forth comes in. So, and that's what, that, that's where the that's where the term root of trust should appear once. Yeah. I think that is where there should be multiple references. Uh, for example, Global Platform has, a, a, has an excellent document on this. Uh, I'm not agreeing with every, everything in there, but I think it's good. Uh, they have bootstrapped roots because, you know, layering and such. So they have the mm -hmm. concept, actually, they just name it differently. And so so for this, I would, I would, would like to have a, a bouquet of references, which is the NIST document which is the global platform document and which is the glossary of the TCG. And we can say, this is, this is, a, we can even state, this is difficult to run. And that, that specific realm where we just say rule of trust once, we can say, this is difficult to run, but in essence, what we, what we can derive from all these definitions, and that's our own conclusion in the document, which is informational, is that a root of trust cannot create evidence about itself. It has to be endorsed from the outside and it's somehow the start of it in a device when you want to build up the evidence that is consumable by a verifier. And if you go with that, I'm also fine with that. Is there any counterindication to what I just said? Uh, I may quibble with some of the wordsmithing, but I think your main point is valid. But there are some of the words that you mentioned that I would quibble with, but I can do that on an actual pull request. Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay. If, if it's if it's just the wordsmithing, we, we can tinker and iron and find a common ground there. That's, I think that's not a problem. But uh, as far as whether any, so uh, I would be happy to work on this in January. Uh, if yes. someone else wants to work on it in <laughs> December, then I may or may not be able to uh, review a pull request depending on when it is. So. No, I think I think uh, the last uh, next uh, I uh, ISG tele chat is is uh, I think tomorrow or next day, uh, the Thursday. So it's this week, and then they're done, and then there will be nothing be, will be happening, nothing. So when we go into the Christmas zombie mode, and I'm absolutely fine with, with going into this uh, rejuvenated in January and, and waiting for a pull request then, and then we can do the battles on, on tiny words yeah. then, and yeah, that's fine. It, if it's not done until January, um, the part that I would be able to help with um, is uh, removal of the term root of trust, but somebody else would have to do adding the uh, uh, references to other documents as examples. Uh, if yeah, I, and I can have the else. references and IRA. Uh, okay. IRA and I will, 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 will uh, do this. Uh, okay. Uh, coordinated. Um, somebody well, else I, wants to get to it before January. More power to you. <laughs> no, I think leave it be. Um, let it be an open pull request, or someone can put a comment. We talked about it today. We'll talk about it more in January. Yeah. Yes. Um, while I have you here, since we don't seem to have many interims, 
I there's something bother has bothered me about rats architecture all along, and I just did a grep for the word device upper or lower case. It occurs 91 times in the architecture. I'd like to point out that the IAB Model T effort is um, in quite a few documents describing the fact that device conflated with endpoint is almost a useless concept and endpoints yes. are not single layer or single component or single entity. And in point of fact, quite often what you want to attest is just a virtual machine in some device and you don't care about the physical quote roots of trust in that device. You care about the integrity of the virtual machine, which is the only thing it knows about. And those are much more commonly a, an application. The IAB model call last week was all about the fact that attestation is about applications, maybe privileged applications, you know, privileged services. Aye, aye, aye. But, but okay. it is not about devices very often. And the extremely heavy focus in RAT's architecture on device is, I think, going to get pushed back in the course of IETF on this call. I, I put a corresponding uh, co uh, email on the list that I say devices arbitrary constra constraining. I'm not happy with that term, and and I absolutely agree with that. I unfortunately, and, and Thomas Hajono says Ira is correct, but wait for it. Thanks, Tom. Also, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, but I'm also not okay with application. I'm, I'm so no, that was important. an example. I um, yeah. The the okay other reference I suggested for things related to trust uh, relationships was the ITU X twelve fifty four that every decent TCG and Etsy spec has referenced for twenty years. Um, entity attestation assurance levels, which has a much better treatment, and always uses the term entity and never uses the yeah. term either and device entity is or also really bad i think but i have a candidate to flow into the mix here okay um typically and that is rfc 4949 terminology it's a system component it's just as simple as that a system, a system component system. could also yeah yeah, it's a collection right, of because some resources. kind of a component yeah. in some kind of a system is indeed what you want to attest to in all cases. Yes, it may be the bootloader and it's, you know, first stage firmware, yeah. but it may very well be something else entirely. And a system component can be a service and a lot of things here will be services. I, I grant that and some are functions that are called on some are apps and that is fine. But all of these would fall under system component. That is covered by the RFC 4949. The problem with entity is that a system entity can be a person or an organization. Yep. I don't want to conflate that. That is a, a hard no for me because I'm an entity and my manufacturers were my parents and they have nothing to do with this, which is my go to example uh, yeah. for, for years. My now. system and, yeah. component is good because it keeps it in the domain of computing. Um, exactly. And not in the domain of the actual trust relationships, which are between people and organizations. Exactly. And it allows for physical and logical component by uh, uh, being right. a super class. Yes, case. it does. Uh, so, uh, Thomas, comment Thomas there? says there is a problem of chain of accountability. Accountability. So let me, let me walk is... away from these guys who are cleaning. Can you guys hear that crazy noise? So, so heck, yes, but sometimes your parents will be accountable and liable for your actions. Yeah, that is where the endorser owner and the relying party owner come into play. They can have other other roles here assigned, I think. Uh, and I think these are the responsible parties that are humans. And so, uh, uh, so the endorser it has some responsibility for me being how I am <laughs> and how I behave. And, and so, so I guess that's 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 the upper bureaucracy again. I think that's on the endorser and uh, and the um, 
the Labour Party or not uh, a level. So, uh, so uh, I think it's it's a non-goal for rats to define entity attestation where entities are not devices or components. Yes, exactly. And system component by IATF lingo that is very established is, I think, a good fit. It is a mouthful. System component sounds like, oh, you're really nerdy, right? But still, if you look at it and you just reference 4949, I think there's nothing not to like that. There, but Lawrence, there are... maybe you, you as the entity attestation token uh, uh, editor, and I have an opinion about device, entity, system component names. Yeah, uh, yeah. There. I mean, uh, I, I, my, the question I wanted, wanted to ask is, you know, is there re really a strong objection to entity? Um, uh, I, I'm, I mean, I picked entity because I thought it was a, a good word, and that was long before any of this. You know, I knew any of you guys actually. <laughs> um, uh, I, I personally, I'm okay with entity, and then you know, and I'd like to stick with the term entity, particularly you know, in in the eat document since uh, yeah, you know, apparently <laughs> he is for entity. Um, but uh, I'm perfectly happy putting a qualifier in that this refers to a system component, and it, this is explicitly not a person. Yeah. So I think in forty nine forty nine, entity just says C system entity. In other words, entity by itself um, is. Uh, only incorporated as the indirect term, not the official term system entity is, and the definition exactly. of system component is far better than the term system entity. So yep. in that sense, for rats purposes, system component is actually a much better term than entity and entity is not really well supported in the rats context in the 4949 sense. And so yeah. if that means that each is problematic, that means each is problematic or not, right? That's the debate. But I think the rats architecture, I think I did not have a problem with device, but I read just now read through the definition that Hank was pointing to. Uh, system component, and I would have no objection for that one, but I think that definition is much better than entity. Okay, oh, I agree. Forty nine, forty nine, <laughs> system entity isn't a very good definition. Um, also, all, a whole bunch of the recent NIST work um, and CISA work in response to the executive order um, with respect to supply chain integrity um, has mm -hmm. used system component or simply component meaning system, but it's implicit um, because that's, that it is that about which you write uh, uh, software bill of materials or hardware. Exactly. I thank you for bringing that up. That is a good connection because we will be fueled by people who have to uh, explicitly sign and endorse and reference value-esque uh, things that are software components and packages due to the executive order. So rats will be fueled by the EO uh, in the very short term. And so uh, I think aligning that is, uh, I think, also a nice thing to do. So yeah, I'm, I'm all about uh, removing the use of device. Uh, and maybe we can just establish a synonym of component to system component as other documents do, and then, uh, and then go from there. And then we just have to uh, substitute uh, devices component and then uh, have also this realm being better connected to us because uh, believe me s bomb and remote attestation will be a uh, uh, have a close relationship in the in the long run so i was looking for uses of the term device and i did not look at all of them because i said it was like 90 something um mm -hmm. i looked at several of them and most of the ones that i looked at one could easily change device to system component there's at least one in a figure where you'd have to come up with some other label and that's mm -hmm. the, the figure yeah. on uh, where the attester is labeled as something inside of a thing and having the attester be inside of a system component is confusing because the tam is also a system component and that one doesn't right. use the term system components you have to come with some couple with some label there so most of them would be very straightforward and a couple of them would require some thought so I think a few places you need to just use system and not system component and use the goodness definition of system, which is better than 4949s, uh, which is an old ISO definition. Remember how old 4949 is. Um, yeah, it is old. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, uh, there are, for instance, on key, on device and off device key generation which could be just on system and off system key generation and it would work yeah. fine okay yeah I, that so I, i'm wondering now does eat become cat sat or scat 
No. <laughs> it. I'm, I'm not sure. Be love. It's days eat. It's entities. It's days eat. Uh, that's funny. And we okay, describe okay. It, the scope of the entities as system components, not human okay. beings and, you know, okay, all right. relationships. I still think that rats <laughs> eat uh, uh, yeah. rims. Uh, I love your question, Lorenz. That's that's very funny. Yeah, I, 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 I agree with you know, there's a rat scat, right? Yeah, yeah. rat scat. Yeah. But, but uh, again, again, I, I still think that rats eat rims, and that's fine. Okay. Yeah, but keep, uh, uh, keep, so, keep so, the acronym. Yeah, keep the acronym. Yeah, as keep the acronym. It, it's cool enough. I think it's <laughs> but, but but just a sentence saying it's equivalent to the system component. All right, all right, I okay. think we mediated everything, and it's fine. Okay. Yeah, and although if you're going to make April 1st RFC, yeah. having a SCAT protocol would be interesting, but okay. No, no, we have been there. We have been there, and we are not doing that. Also, too many skims in the, in the mix already. Um, yeah, there's yeah, cool. are. <laughs> yeah, that's a certainly, yeah, it's, it's a new conundrum. I don't know why skim is so popular right now, but it's unfortunate timing. So we have seven minutes to the hour, um, and I think we have a few ways forward here now. So, so eat uh, can can benefit from this discussion by 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 pulling somehow in the system component. Um, yeah, I might I'll do that. And 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 I think I think uh, uh, the rats architecture can benefit from this discussion by pruning a lot of root of trust terms and 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 making a very a prominent place there that 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 will, that I think uh, Dave volunteered to provide some some so the, the framing for. And and Ira and Hank will 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 add some references and and other other context in the next year, for, and and so uh, the, the the trust anchor discussion at the very beginning, I think uh, Thomas Fossati got enough guidance to to produce a uh, a useful pull request here. So that's my summary of our meeting today. Uh, uh, I'd like to add to that, yeah. Hank. Um, sure. Would since right now I don't think there is an open issue tracking this if uh you or somebody can open an issue and add a couple points from the meeting notes of this meeting so that we remember a month from now um what it was we talked about today ah jesus yeah that is of course the best idea i'm on vacation i would like to say so i i'm taking volunteers <laughs> so am i right now. <laughs> yeah i know i know so we all so most of us are so um, I don't know. Uh, Ira, are you on vacation, or, or, or do you want to open an issue for us? No, I, I, no we can't overload Ira. I will protect okay. Ira from more work. I am allergic <laughs> to GitHub. I avoid it. I cope with How it in Ned? four other standards bodies, but I don't like it. How about Ned? You're 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 an editor. I'm at work. <laughs> okay. Do you want to try to uh, open an issue and capture uh, uh, the conclusions that Hank just mentioned? Yep. Thank you. Thank so, you. Thank you a lot. <laughs> could like, really. someone open an issue or a discussion thread on the list or something about um, minimizing the use of the word device, where probably we mostly really didn't mean device anyway in RATS architecture? Probably yeah, said, I think ITF chairs don't get holidays. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not sure of this group. So, um, uh, anyways, uh, yes, I, if there's an issue, if, if Net does some legwork creating the issue, I can popularize, um, popularize it on the, on the list with, with emails. This I can do. That, that's a transfer thing that, that I can do. Uh, that's, that's, that's easier for me. Good. You have four minutes to spare. Yeah, I would like to thank everybody to uh, spend their vacation here. Yeah. Yeah. I hope it was fun. <laughs> and for your time and energy. Cool. Bye bye. Uh, all right. Well, uh, Lawrence, do you want to stick around? I got a couple minutes if you wanted to chat about the class ID stuff. Yeah, sure. Um, the interesting discussion that I shall join or shall I drop? Uh, you're welcome to. Yourself. I don't care. It's, with, yeah. with, it's up to you. You're on vacation. Ah, I, I, I'm drinking sake right now and eating sushi. <laughs> you don't see that, but I am doing that. So, uh, uh -huh. <laughs> okay. um, so the, the, the thing that it was hard for me to understand is like, when does a class ID change? So like, do you have it? If is it a different um, device model? Is it a different uh, level of software compatibility? 
You mean uh, when does it change over time, or what do you mean by change? I've got I got two uh, devices. Can I say devices? I yeah. two, two well, entities. Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> I got two different ones, and they have well, let's say have three. Um, two of them have the same class ID, and the third one has a different class ID. What's the the characteristic that tells me that that third one should have a different different class ID, and the characteristic that tells me that those two should have the same class ID? Um, okay, so first, before I get to that, let me uh, point out that um, since each you can have multiple claim sets where you have a different claim set, say, for each layer or for each part of a composite device or whatever, that each one of those can have a class ID with a slightly yeah. different meaning, right? You could have a class sure. ID for the hardware and a class ID for the firmware and a class ID for the software, for example, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so as long yeah, as we're so talking you, about you, stuff you, that's you, in the same category, right, so let's say I got three pieces of hardware with class IDs, and, and I can answer your question there, and three pieces of software with a class IDs, and I'll answer your question there, but it's a different answer. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, because you can change software over time, but you can't change hardware over time. That's why the answer is different, obviously, so. Um, yeah. So, uh, can you see my screen right now? Yeah. Okay, so this is the TEEP architecture document, and I'm just gonna point out a phrase or two here because it's in, some parts are intentionally, um, uh, I don't know if vague isn't the right term, but intentionally um, uh, uh, worded such they can be used multiple ways, right? To, to, to have to maximize the use cases. And so I'm gonna elaborate on at least some, some of my thoughts on the language that's in here. Um, so if I go down to uh, the following information, I was looking for one about um, less. I had it up here and then I switched away from it. I'm trying to find it again here. Uh, so it's not, not up there. So I'm trying to elaborate on a particular sentence in here. And Well, I can talk about it in terms of uh, this one, but this is, wasn't the sentence I was looking for. Uh, as it did to say type of TA and other things in here. So if that was type of TA, let me do a quick search here. Type, I'm remembering the phrase, right? Type of TA. Um, all right, well, let me just talk about these right here, because this is in the, the following information is required. So this is kind of, uh, these are the paragraphs that talk about uh, from which the set of requirements of uh, claims are, and the claims can be expressed in a number of different ways, as long as the following thing, but there was someplace else that talked about almost like a use case description. So, and each one of these bullets has multiple things broken down into it, right? And so here's one. Okay, where it talks about class, and this is talking about, in some use cases, it may be sufficient to, okay, so we back up to say, um, unique device identification and providing descriptions and so on. So this is where it talks about the unique device identifier, right? This is not class ID, right? Um, it may be used to uniquely identify the device to a TAM. In some cases, okay, the privacy regarding device identification will vary with a type of TA provision of the TEE. Uh, the sentence I was looking for, um, had to do with the purpose of attestation. Maybe the word purpose was there. Okay, yeah, here it is. Here's the sentence I was looking for. Okay, and T, the primary purpose of an attestation is to allow a, a, a device, <coughs> system component, um, the attester to prove, or a, a system, the attester to prove to a TAM, the relying party, that T in the device has particular properties, was built by a particular manufacturer, and or is executing a particular TA, right? So this is an interesting phrase right here that gets to your main question there, because right. uh, uh, th this right here, a TA is often pure software, and that would be up at the software one, and then it's more uh, like a, a, a Coswid, right? In that, in that case, right? Um, in other cases, if you were to say, and or is executing a particular TE, on the other hand, which is uh, the ones that we were looking at down here, um, what type uh, is applicable by the TE type? Okay, so the type of TE that generated this attestation must be identified. Okay, so now we're down into this one. This what are the types of what, what are what are TE types? I mean, when you say yeah, TE I'll, type, I'll, I think, I'll elaborate but... on that. I'll elaborate on that in just a second. That's fine. That's the main point I'm getting to. Okay, 
So this includes version identifying information for hardware, firmware, and software versions applicable by the TE type. Again, there's that phrase here. Uh, the manufacturer information for the TE is required. Okay, so we know that it has a manufacturer information, but the manufacturer information isn't quite the same thing as TE type. Okay, and it's required in order to disambiguate the same TE type created by different manufacturers. Okay, okay so now I'm going to give you some examples. Okay, so a single manufacturer TE example would be SGX, okay, or Intel is the only manufacturer that creates SGX, and SGX is done purely in hardware, although there's like a driver support that's necessary to, to leverage SGX. Okay. So that one's a fairly simplistic case. Right, all, all, uh, SGX, uh, uh, what's all that? SGXs are the same. Um, no, there's a version because there's SG, there's actually three versions of SGX. Um, okay. There's, uh, the first one is just called SGX. The third one is called SGX2. And the second one is SGX with such, I can't remember what the actual term is, and Ned isn't in the call anymore, but uh, the point is there's actually three versions of the hardware that have uh, additional capabilities, um, like whether you can support uh, um, authenticated boot, for example, is something that is only in SGX2, but not SGX. You can only do measured boot um, for SGX. Um, in other words, you can't whitelist things, right, and, and so on. Um, and in SGX, it has it will only launch things that have an Intel signature. Where SGX two, it has a layer of indirection there, where you can say what is the key that things have to be signed with, and then it will launch anything with that sign with that key, anything that's been signed by that signer. Uh, where SGX one, the signer had to be Intel. So if you wanted a TA, you had to send it off to Intel, get Intel to sign it, and now you can actually run it on your own machine. Uh, so then my my so SGX has different versions, um, and so. Um, you might even be able to say those different versions are TE type, but, but, but you've already got a separate claim for version. And so from an E perspective, then uh, having something that says SGX and a separate claim for version is fine. So even though there's three different versions, you don't need three different class IDs or anything like that, right? You'd only need one. Okay. So a more complicated case, though, is the way that uh, Trust Zone works, okay? where Trust Zone by itself is the hardware capability, but by itself, it isn't the TEE. The TEE is the chip plus the piece of uh, firmware that goes on top of it, okay? And which, there, since there can be multiple manufacturers of Trust Zone, right? Because ARM just sells the design and different manufacturers build the chips. So like the chip might be from NXP with an ARM certified design, and there's multiple vendors there. So the manufacturer ID in this case would be NXP, not ARM, okay? And so you need something to say, okay, well, this is a uh, trust zone. And then the other axis that makes it difficult is that you can run multiple types of firmware. Or sorry, there are multiple types of firmware out here that you could run on top of trust zone to create a TE. So Opti is the most well-known one. Uh, Trusty, I think, is the one that uh, Google uses in Android. And so those are the top two is Opti and Trusty. And if you're creating a, an application to run on those, you got to know, is it is is, it, is this designed for Opti or is this designed for uh, Trusty? When I, and so in an attestation, you'd want to say, well, my TE is of this type. Now, maybe you could do that by saying Opti and Trusty have a separate Coswood okay, on top of Trust Zone as the hardware part. And that's up to the vendor or arm or somebody else that does a profile to say what's the actual te type for that you're supposed to say what's the actual class id that you'd want to use for trust zone is it is the class id something that identifies um um opti or is, is the class id something that only identifies trust zone right the more obvious thing here is probably it just identifies trust zone but this is a point of something that the profile would be responsible for and not eat right you're just creating a space and then somebody that defines the number in the space says here's what that number means right or right now, I could be wrong, but my expectation is use a Coswood for uh, for the um, uh, trustee versus uh, Opti. They'll have separate Coswoods, but the TE type here, cross vendor, the class ID would be trust zone. That's my personal guess right now. I'm just trying to give you some flavor of things that you'd be able to use it for because Opti yeah. can work on any trust zone, right? There's different chip manufacturers, sure, but they're all going to be the same because they have all, all, apply, all comply to the same uh, official ARM spec for, for VA to the architecture, for example. Yeah, actually, I think one of the most widely used, uh, uh, I, would, I would say OSs for a, for a trust zone is Qualcomm's T, uh, QT. Okay. Um, 
but uh, I mean, uh, yeah. and that's that's actually what's in most Android devices. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. I mean, I worked and I worked on that for uh, a lot of years. Um, okay. Doesn't change my main point, but that actually yeah. educates me more. So thank you. Yeah. Um, okay. So you're really it, it's because what happens is the 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 uh, relying party here in, in the TEEP scenario, the relying party is the entity that is going to push down a software or firmware update to a uh, system. Okay. And so the attestation is going to say are you healthy or not? Here's the current state, right? And the desired state, if it doesn't match it during verification, if it doesn't, then the job of the relying party is in fact to do the remediation. So he's going to kick off the remediation and he's going to use the uh, attestation information to say, what is it that's part that's out of compliance right now? And those are the parts that I'm going to push on updates to. It's either running their older version or it's missing a piece or there's now a new piece because the desired state has changed to have some new component in it. Then I need to push down some, some new piece of software or firmware that wasn't there, in this case would be software, right? New piece of software that wasn't there before, so I may have to rev the firmware. And so it's really the information that would be in the attestation results, right? Which might be copied out of the evidence or derived from the evidence. When the relying party is going to use that as a key to say, okay, here's the types of software or firmware I need to push down and install on the device or rev on the device. Uh, sorry, the system. Um, and so that's what it's used for. And a piece of information that you have to have in order to push down the right piece of software or firmware is in fact this, you know, TE type, right? I can generate the, the new version of Opti if I know that your trust zone, regardless of manufacturer, that type of thing. I mean, the, the, uh, I mean, this, this uh, kind of um, characteristic of TEs, I mean, I, I guess it extends other where other yes. places too, it, where yes, you have some is. IP that comes from ARM basically, and different hardware manufacturers uh, have variants of it. Exactly. So, yep. Which yeah. is why we said it's not really TEEP specific uh, request. The same comes up. I'm just answering here's TEEP's use of it, but you're absolutely right. The exactly the same things happen outside of TEEP. And that's why we want it in the EAT document and not in the profile. Like I think ARM has, I mean, at one point I know ARM had a GPU and uh -huh. uh, there's probably different DSPs and stuff like that. Um, yep. 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 Uh, I'm not sure where to go with this to, at the at the moment right <laughs> now. Um, uh, the um, I mean the text that's in in uh, that's you know in the in the tip of GitHub uh, has a um, a hardware class ID, um, and it, it's really basically a. Uh, it, it's it's not in the. It's oh, not, sorry, uh, GitHub. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, it's in GitHub. It's not in the. Uh, um, in in a published draft. Um, uh, so it, it has a, a a a hardware class ID, and that that's really a hardware model number, and it's specifically a hardware model number. Um, so it has the the idea, and, and it's specific to OEM. So. If you want to identify a piece of hardware, you have the the, the you know you're going to have an OEM ID, um, yeah. and you um, probably have a, a class ID, which is the model, and you could you may or may not have a version, um, but yeah. that, that model number, uh, the class ID, is definitely qualified by the OEM ID in in this in this particular design. Yeah, and obviously that won't work for these cases where you have say NXP is the OEM. But um, uh, you know, you just have to say it's compliant to the ARM spec as the class ID to know. Yeah, see, I, I'm not sure. That, that feels, you know, try, trying trying to. The same really... thing, by the way, is going to happen a lot in Risk Five as well, for example. In, in where? It, it Risk Five, right? Because the, the, okay. it's it's an open source, uh, hard, it's an open yeah, hardware yeah. design that anybody can conform to, uh, and so there's uh, things like we have TEs or other pieces of software, not TEs, being designed for Risk Five as long as it meets the spec. So it's going to follow the same type of ecosystem that ARM uses. It just happens to be a consortium that owns it rather than a single company that owns the the the, the reference architecture. So you really do mean class? Um, it, it's it... yeah. yeah. Yeah, so Risk Five and R and ARM are the two big ecosystems I think that are going to fall into this model, uh, whereas things like you know Intel and AMD are just going to be special cases where they're one to one with the manufacturer, right? Right. right. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure what to do about this right now. So okay, uh, 
Now, now I now I think I I uh, understand um, what uh, what uh, you're after there, and and I'll, I'll go look over that section seven um, more carefully that you were you were referring to. Um, All right. Well, I hope that's helpful. The, 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 the amount of class differentiation will grow. Yes. People will have uh, the classes will be be more aligned to capabilities, and I would like to say protected capabilities more than uh, design principles over the years. So, so looking into the future today, we are talking about uh, uh, trustee and opti and, 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 uh, and SDKs QT. for uh, enclaves and such, but, but in the end, it will end up, what, what, what is the checklist and the, 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 the checks that you're marking here for confidential compute, for trusted compute, and that will be the, the the real deciding factor of the class uh, in yeah, the end. So, for, so I think we're we going forward. Which that. is class ID is on a per claim set basis, and in some cases you'll have a different claim set for your TEE versus your non TEE. Right? There are some architectures you have yeah. a different chip and so on. And so class ID, you'll have multiple of multiple class IDs per evidence, right? Because you'll have one for each claim set, right? Think of layered right, exactly. or whatever else. And yeah. so each right. one of those will have a slightly different meaning, right? The meaning of class ID for hardware and the meaning for firmware are going to be slightly different. They're going to have a lot of analogies, right? Yeah. But you can actually rev the firmware over time. And so you can change class IDs over time in the firmware part, but not for the hardware part. And so that's why it's up to uh, the profile to define the meanings of values and stuff, as long as there's a way to, uh, to express it in a claim set, which was all the request was. Exactly. For yeah. So the grouping we identified in yeah, the yeah. Uh, cross uh, um, manufacturer domain is uh -huh. uh, instance class and group. Yeah. Group being the arbitrary chosen thing, <laughs> like <laughs> cloud center or something. I don't know. Uh -huh. yeah. Okay. Well, think about that, Lawrence. Let me know if you have any other questions. But hopefully, this has been helpful. Yeah. Um. So just one, one more question. I mean, so you you uh -huh. definitely see, um. The that you know, Opti versus QT versus Trusty or whatever it was. I mean, th those are definitely three different classes, even if they're, they're running on identical hardware. Um, there are three different TEEs. Yeah. Whether mm -hmm. you use them to be as classes or just uh, Coswids for the um, yeah, uh, exactly. component. Um, right now, my personal opinion is to do the latter and not do different class IDs, but you could, and that's the discussion that should happen inside the profile discussion. Not it doesn't have to be in rats that can be in teep as long as uh, it can accommodate that uh, and specifically the use case that we know of that you use class IDs for is for the hardware level where you have multiple menu multiple hardware OEMs that all conform to the same uh, spec that upper layers depend on. Yeah, okay. Exactly. It is the core. The, the E draft that you will create here right now is the core. That will open up uh, multiple dimensions of, of how to use it. And I think that, that what Dave's just highlighting is as long as it provides the tools to do that, right. we are super happy. Yeah. And then, then that allows the T profile to say, okay, should uh, QT versus trustee versus uh, Opti, should those be class IDs or should those be Coswids? That's the discussion that should happen in T when doing the, when doing the REST profile. Um, yeah, okay. But we're not going to, we really don't want to have that discussion when saying, okay, uh, trust zone versus uh, uh, whatever risk five calls it, you know, keystone or whatever, I, there's a name for it and so on. Is that going to be a COSWID um, or a class ID? And there the right answer, I think, would be a uh, class ID. So, okay. Okay. Well, thank you. Appreciate that. Okay. Cool. All right. Okay. Thanks for sticking around. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. Glad we could find some time while we're all on vacation here. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. As long as we're going to show up make, anyway. Make so. More, more carnivores uh, devouring yeah. your vacation time, Dave. Do you have God another no. fifteen minutes? Another what? Another fifteen minutes. Um. What's the top? Ten. What's the As topic? topic is the um, 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 next steps in milestone definition rats, and you are on vacation, so I can't involve okay. you in the, the discussion. Okay. So I might need some directions. Uh, if you're saying spending ten minutes now saves me an hour later during vacation, then yes. yes. 
<laughs> yes, definitely. It sounds like a trick question. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and then you have a link in your inbox for that. Uh, okay. Because this is a uh, official ITF Nobel meeting. Okay, quick yeah. post sync. Okay, uh, opening. Oh, this is a new Zoom okay. meeting? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, but that's fine with you. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm going to switch over there. It, it, uh, so thanks, Lawrence. I'm going to drop off of this one and switch over to Hank's Zoom then. Okay. All right. Talk to you right. later. Bye. All right. Bye, folks. Thanks. Bye bye.